in this video we'll continue on with our custom legend and now we're going to make sure that it will hide so for example if i click on this what will happen is it will hide the line and also hide the item and if i click on that it will reappear again if i click on this one here this one has a slightly weird animation but that's all right the focus will be on hiding and showing the item for now so let's start to look at how to create the custom legend or more specifically how to now start to create the button to hide and show this item here. So first of all, this is based on another one which is on how to create the custom legend for a line and this is part number two. So if you want to know, make sure you watch part one first. So I got this question where they were asking specifically, how do we solve this or how, do we, how can we hide that? All right. So let's start to work on this. So the first thing what I want to do here is to create a button. I want to have two buttons here. So I'm going to say your button, and I'm going to say your on click, and this on click could be made very simple. Let's say uh, toggle legend. So you're going to toggle the legend, and then I'm going to get the value of this, referring to this button or this element that we click on. However, here what I want more as well is the value, and the value equals, I'm going to use here the index number, because we have two data sets here index 0 and index 1 because as you can see here that's these two so there's 0 and then we say the value here or the text would be weekly sales and then we have another one as well and then we have your weekly uh, profits so you can see here that's profits and of course this is number one save that refresh all right you have these beautiful buttons now what I want to do is create the functionality of it. So what we're going to do here is we go to copy this this function and start to build that function here. So I'm going to scroll down all the bottom, just put in some additional enters. And I'm going to say function equals this or function equals the toggle legend. And then we're going to say here we have the this as the argument. So this will be the data set, basically the number. And then what I want to do here is first of all show you what we get if I put in data set. If I save this, refresh, open up the developer tab. Let's refresh this one more time nicely. Click on one, there you are. So what happens, we get the full button element. And I don't want this, I want the value. And if I click on this one, it does recognize where we click on. However, we get too much information. We only need the value itself. So to do that, if I do here dot value and save that, refresh, click and click. As you can see here, now it extracts only the value of the button so now we have this here and so what we're going to do next is now starting to check if the item is visible on the chart so do we see the line on the chart yes or no if we do see hide it afterwards if we do not see it show it afterwards or after the click so that's very important so we're going to do here now a check let's say a constant and then we're going to say here is data shown and then we're going to say equal and then we're going to grab here the my chart, because we're referring to this chart specifically. And then we're going to say here dot. And we're going to use here now a chart.js API. We say is data set visible. And then we're going to say here the index number. Well, the index number was, of course, this item here. So I'm going to grab this one and put it in there. Once I did that, if I do now console log, we can say here, put in this save refresh now if i click you can see here zero is true and of course number one with the profits is true they're both true of course right now because it is always shown so then now or so the next thing we want to do is now to create a statement so that we have a if statement to hide it if it is true and if it's false to show it so or one of the other so what we're going to do now is I would say an if statement. So if and let's say here first, if is data shown equals strict, we're going to say here then is false. So if it's not being shown, so if it's shown and then the answer is false, meaning it's hidden, then what I want to do here is I want to say my chart dot show, and this is a command built into chart.js as well. Same like this, this one here show and then what we will do then here is the index number what is index number here of course again this item so once we have this we have this one here we want to do exactly the same but then 
we're going to set this on true and I copy everything because we then need to hide this here. So you might say, why are we doing this here? Well, basically, if the data is shown equals false, meaning it's not visible, then, then after that, it will become visible. And exactly the opposite as well. So if it is showing and we click on this, then it should hide. So that's why we have this exactly opposite effect here. So if I save this, refresh, click, there we are, and click, there we are, and click back, all right. So now it works. If I do this one, it hides, but it gives a weird effect. But anyway, it doesn't matter. The focus will be right now on the lines, not on the effect itself. But you might say, well, hold on. What about this text here? Why is this text still hanging here? The reason why this is hanging is because we are working with a plugin. And a plugin cannot read this functionality here. It's independent of it. So let's start to work on a nice trick. And this is a really advanced topic, by the way. And uh, understanding this is very useful for you as well if you're going to use more advanced or creating your own plugins that you want to give to users. So the first thing what I want to do is I want to notify you on this one here, the ID custom legend and the args and options. This is now going to be very, very important for us. We're going to use this here. So uh, the first thing what I want to do here is to remove this fill style here. We're going to remove that one. I'm going to say a comma. I'm going to put in an index. And the reason why is... We have this meta sets for each. It loops through two data sets. One with index zero, another one with index one. So that's what I'm going to show you first. I'm going to say your console log. And I'm going to say your index. All right. So if I save this, and because we don't assign any color here, probably we're going to default color black. And let me just make sure that the console logs here are all hidden so we don't get distracted by these values here. Save that. Refresh. All right, so they're black now, but you can see here, zero, should be zero, one, zero, one, and the multiple times, of course, because of the animation that's working here. So click on that, all right. Uh, of course, nothing happens yet. So what I want to do now is because we have this, we can now start to work on coloring it. And for this, I'm going to use this ID now. This ID becomes very useful. Copy the ID here, go down here, and then in our options we have here the plugins for legend and now i'm going to put a comma here and i'm going to say here now we have the custom legend so within here we can let's say uh, i'll give it a name of font color all right and let's make this for now pink all right so we have this one here and then i'm going to show you here we have this fill style i'm going to just duplicate this well I'll hide the other one i'm going to say here options referring to where we're going to put in options dot font color so make sure it's descriptive but you might say why is it options dot font color here and it so shouldn't it be just maybe here up no the reason why is because we have the id here whatever the id is it's basically options plugins dot whatever it is whatever we assign it here and then from there on we go to the uh, font color here so this is very important to understand so now we have this if i save this here refresh now we have this here because of that we are now able to play around or update this here without updating or doing something weird with it here this is very important because this custom legend plugin blocks our adjustments this is why it was so hard to solve this so i'm going to show you here we're going to have to we have to do some additional items in here so the first thing what i want to do here now is go back and give it the original color for now, I'll just simplify by making it an array. So I'm going to create an array, and I just grab these colors here above. If you don't want an array with these hard-coded colors, of course, go for soft-coded. You can use the for each. Right now, I want to just skip that because it would take me too much. It would make it more complicated than it is. So I'm just going to grab this one, and of course, you can figure that one out by putting it here or find an array beforehand and then insert it. So that's what we have here. So we have the first one. Put in there that's the weekly sales and then we have here the border color let's grab this one as well and put it in there all right so we have this but of course if i refresh it now it only gives one color so don't worry about that why it gives one color because we have an index here but we didn't assign an index here and so it doesn't know exactly which color to take so it just grabs whatever it thinks is logical and in this case it's the first one so what i want to do here just say here that's why you have this beautiful index here as our Helper, save, refresh. 
there we are so now we have these colors here so this means now we have basically we didn't do nothing visually uh, visually or at least visually that's the right term visually we didn't adjust it but at at the back end we have adjusted a lot this is very important to understand all right so now we have this let's scroll down here and what i want to do now is to start updating them based on this here so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to put a center column it will say enter so if data is shown equals show all right we want to basically show that one or let's say if it's hidden we're going to do this one first and then after i'm going to adjust that one so we're going to say here my chart because now we can pinpoint that specific area here so how do we get there well we go from my chart to configuration which is the configuration here options plugins and then custom legends so say config my chart and then we say config dot uh, options dot plugins dot and then we go to grab here uh, custom legend and then of course the font color dot font color and let's assign this font color and make sure here by the way index number remember we don't want them both to be transparent no no we only want the one to be selected so what did we select would be here based on data set value and then i'm going to say this will be transparent all right semicolon and save refresh so now if i click on this there we are but if i click again it needs to be shown again but you can see here now we are able to hide this i mean this one looks absolutely horrible but i guess i need to uh, check the animations about this but anyway doesn't matter so now let's start to reassign the color as well. For this, we could just copy this, but I don't want to do that one. For this, I'm going to do a bit more neat by extracting the color, whatever we have assigned here, or the border color here. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to say here, just exactly say, copy all of this, put it in here, but then I'm going to say here, this font color, everything is correct, but then it's not anymore transparent, no. We're going to say, again, my chart, dot, and then for my chart, we go all up to our data here, from data to data sets, whatever the index would be, and then border color. So let's go back here. Where is it? My chart dot data dot data sets index would be this beautiful item here that we always use. All right. Then we say dot border color, and there we are. So if I save this, we should see now a proper appearing and disappearing of our value. There we are. And there we are. Absolutely phenomenal. And that's basically how you can use this. And you can see this is a more advanced way of doing it. And this is the only way how you can modify anything if you have a plugin. If you have a plugin like this here, modify with this, understanding here the ID item. And that's it. That's basically how to do this. So if you enjoyed this video and maybe you want to have even something additional or let's say even the tooltips improving, I have here another one on how to add custom annotation line on a Hoover or on Hoover in ChartJS, which basically is a plugin as well, a custom plugin with custom effects on here as well. That could be a very nice add-on on this chart.